Welcome to another episode of CI Stories. This week we are going to talk about huge autonomous underwater vehicles. I have already mentioned in my last video or in one of my last videos uh, the different size categories of uh, uncrewed underwater vehicles uh, or autonomous underwater vehicles called short AUVs. And these reach from very small micro AUVs uh, to over mid-sized survey class AUVs to the biggest categories, the XL UUVs, the extra large uncrewed underwater vehicles. And this is uh, a category of giant uh, machines. And my last visits also particular to the Oceans Conference and to in, in presentations from the industry and everything, it is clear that this category is really on the rise. And this is uh, where a lot of development will happen in the next years in autonomous underwater vehicles. So I want to dedicate a special video just to this this big kind of uh, autonomous underwater vehicles. So the first question is, why would you actually want to go that big with the vehicles? And of course, uh, bigger is better, but bigger also has quite some disadvantages. For example, it's much harder to move that vehicle around and uh, bring it into the water, for example. But the concept with these huge vehicles is that they act as their own ship. You don't need to bring them on a ship, but you actually just deploy them from a harbor, either from a boat ramp or from a crane. And uh, it is really easy to get into the water and then the vehicle is just the ship itself. And that means these vehicles have a dramatic, extreme long range. So depending on which one, we are talking about a range of up to 5,000 kilometers. So this is uh, as much that you could theoretically cross the entire Arctic Ocean uh, without charging the battery. So you see that uh, these types of vehicle have a, a really interesting uh, operation space uh, where they can actually replace some of what we do with traditional uh, ships. Uh, so they are very interesting for uh, particularly for uh, decarbonizing the oceanographic fleet. And of course, they are also very interesting uh, for uh, military because they are basically uncrewed submarines and they can transport a lot of payload and uh, perform a lot of operations. So this is a, a really big uh, type of vehicle and typically these vehicles are over 10 meters long and uh, they are over 10 tons heavy. So it's a quite a big vehicle, but that also means that you can easily integrate a lot of payloads in there. And I just want to go uh, with you through a few of uh, these uh, these systems and the first of them is actually uh, the Theseus uh, AUV or XLUUV, which is the first really big AUV and for current standards is probably still a small uh, XLUUV, but uh, it was already able uh, in the late 90s to lay about 200 kilometers of fiber optic cable in the Arctic Ocean underneath the ice uh, for a Canadian military project. So this is quite a unique uh, capability and it never repeated that mission again, uh, but it was really trailblazing this path of these uh, massive and huge vehicles. So then uh, currently the, the, the developments are going on and many countries have uh, development programs. But uh, there's uh, one who has actually already sold a vehicle and is currently in production. And uh, that is uh, the Kongsberg Hugen Endurance. And we have heard a lot about the Hugen uh, vehicles. I've uh, shown them to you in, the, in my expedition uh, on the Amundsen videos. And uh, so you know them. But this is the giant variant of, of the Hugen. It's also 12 meters long has a, a, a range of over uh, 2,000 kilometers. So it's actually a very uh, impressive vehicle, uh, which because it inherits a lot of its intelligent functions from the Hugen vehicle, is a very well adapted big vehicle already. So I'm looking forward to see the first of these vehicles coming out and see what they're able to do in the ocean. 
Another company had, that has already successfully sold vehicles uh, here, particular to the military, is Boeing with their Echo Voyager. And uh, in the America, it's America. It's known under the name Orca XLU UV, and uh, it's a long-range uh, vehicle uh, for for uh, the military. And the the special thing about the Echo Voyager is, while the other vehicles that I just introduced, they are purely battery based. Uh, the Echo Voyager actually has a diesel engine on board to be running uh, on the diesel engine and recharging the batteries, uh, similar to a, how a submarine does it. So the range, uh, submerged range of the Echo Voyager is actually not that great uh, because it needs to go to the snorkel depth so that it's able to, to run the motors. But uh, then with this motor, it also has an extremely large range. Now, if we're looking into the most recent development developments, there is basically the follow-up of Thesis, and that's a, another Canadian company, uh, Cellular Robotics, which has started the development of Solus XR, or uh, also known under the name Seawolf for the Australian Navy. And this is also a 12 meter long, uh, over 16 ton heavy vehicle. Uh, and it is very particular because it is supposed to have a range of more than 5,000 kilometers because it's working not with batteries, not with a diesel engine, but actually with a hydrogen fuel cell. So uh, you load this up with hydrogen in gas bottles and then it's running up to 5,000 kilometers autonomous. They plan to even do that under the ice. So this is a really crazy system and let's see what is coming out. Actually, German industry is also coming out with uh, such a system and there is at the moment the project called MUM. It's standing for a modular underwater mothership. And basically here the idea is to link up multiple modules that are comprised of standard small 10 foot shipping containers, uh, put some uh, buoyancy and, and uh, sheathing on them and that that really will be a massive, massive uh, underwater vehicle. And the idea here is that you have a modular vehicle that you can exchange different parts and reconfigure for each mission. And that you basically put these big uh, Lego blocks uh, together uh, depending how you need it for your mission. But at the moment, this is just a research project and, and not finish that, but they are looking forward to have a demonstrator in the water in 2024. So you see, uh, these systems are really interesting uh, to get an overview about uh, what is happening in the future uh, with robotics. And I hope that for scientific application, we actually get the chance to use these vehicles to maybe do some of the research that we're currently doing of an icebreaker, which is producing a lot of carbon footprint. Uh, maybe with one of these vehicles, maybe even running on a, on a fuel cell, uh, without emitting carbon and doing measurements underneath the ice in the Arctic Ocean just by passing across the Arctic Ocean with an AUV. That would be a fantastic future. So uh, let's hope that's going to be possible in the future. And with that, I want to thank you a lot for watching and have a nice day.